I gotta look good, feel good in the gym when I dress. Is that a thing for you? I know you're sponsored by people, but the question is, do you honestly feel like you have to look good when you go to the gym to train? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, <laughs> yes. I'm a girl, first of all, so I like to feel cute. Okay. Even when I'm training, I love it. So I remember 2020, even before I started like, competing, I already used to wear bombshell. <laughs> Man, y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all know where we at, man. We are right here at Legacy Sessions, man. Episode six, and guess what? We brought somebody all the way from that hot weather, all the way to the DMV, where it's a little bit cold, but it's a little bit warm. <laughs> Either way you go, we doing it. But we got Barbara, a.k.a. Bobby, in the building. Yes. Today, welcome, yeah. welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Man, we glad to have you. We glad to have you. You know, we got a influencer, all the things in one in one person in the building, you know what I mean? She's done it all. She's an IFBB pro. She's an Olympian. She's an influencer. She has her own bathing suit line. You like you killing it. You everywhere we turn, you right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm trying. trying. <laughs> nah, you still, doing? Still big little little steps, but you doing it? Okay, Thanks. cool. So we'll just jump right into it because we got it right here in front of us. You know, we got this nice Celsius in front of us, and I know that's one of your sponsors. So. I seen one of them has like 270 milligrams of caffeine, so I'm assuming that's more like the pre-workout version. Yeah, like I'll, I'll definitely use that for like intense workout or outside workout. Okay. If I'm going to like run outside, the walk outside, okay. I'll use that one for sure. All right, so that would be the Celsius Live Fit Essentials Cherry Limeade. So do, but does it taste good? It tastes so good. It they also so good? have other flavors, too. Okay, cool. Then we got the the watermelon watermelon ice, and this one is this is the two hundred milligrams. Yeah. How you feel about that one? This one is actually was was a recent uh, ad from Celsius. Actually, I love the idea because especially now I actually have it in my bag okay. <laughs> because I'm traveling. You're traveling is on the so go. It's sometimes easy. I like here. Um, I'm I have like for example in Brazil. I was just in Brazil um, last month, and I didn't have a Celsius there. So, I, like, they just came out of there. I wish I had that okay, yeah, when I went when to Brazil, Brazil, you know? Right, 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 right. Because I miss Celsius You miss so it much. so much. So that yeah. means you drink it on a daily basis, then? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Who follows me knows I post okay, everything. Cool. Well, y'all already heard it here. You know what I mean? This is what she do. So, first of all, first and foremost, I'm just super excited to have you here. And the reason why I'm excited is because I've seen so much of your growth over years. And I think it's an amazing testimony to people that want to be in the fitness industry. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I meet so many different people and they like, Hey, it takes me forever to do this. Or it may, it might not, or it takes me too long to do certain things when it comes to the fitness industry or even building a brand. And to mm -hmm. know that you're 29, correct? Mm -hmm. To know that you're 29 and you've done so many different things. What do you feel like? First of all, was like the staple to getting you to where you are today? I think uh, like the main thing, especially for the the brand side, side it was like to be bold. Okay. I had to like say to myself, no, like why, why I cannot do it? Um, so that's why I always like been thinking to me, like why cannot be me? You know, I see like uh, like amazing. They are growing. They shining, beautiful. But like, why why cannot do it too? And I, I always been like that since I was a kid. Um, I was like raised in a really really um, poor family. Mm -hmm. um, my mom would never have a con like he would she would never be able to pay like a college for me. 
And I always, like, since I was a kid, I was like, no, I'm going to college. Okay. And why cannot be me? And then I made it to, like, I, I remember, like, being in high school and none of my friends already applying for college and then I was like what am I gonna do and I remember that there is this college in Brazil that is uh, one of the biggest college in each state okay so the my state has one is like federal university so you can get for free like you only get for free actually nobody pay for that right but you have to pass in like a really tough exam mm -hmm. um so i remember like that's my chance like because for sure right. my mom can pay a college so i remember going to this like i was in high school but i was going after the high school to this uh like a course that they teach you how to pass in the test and then I remember I could afford that course too because of course I have to right. pay for that. So I did a, another test for that course and then I passed and I got 100% free. Okay, cool. So from that I studied and I passed in, in this college. And this I was 17. Like okay. I got out of high school and then I went to, the, I, I made it to a college. Okay. And that was something like, okay, that was like, that was your way like I saw my other friends could have made it and I'm happy for them. But I came from a different family, like, situation but i never put myself like oh no i cannot do this. it's not for me i never thought like that i was like no actually i can do that and that's why i think it's a little bit bold for me sometimes and sometimes i feel like you should have been trying to do that like maybe you're trying to do more than you should or more that is for you but why can i not believe that something good can be for me you know so that's been your story since you were young then you yeah you've always been bold <laughs> ambitious mm -hmm. took some risks yeah they had to that was the same of uh, when i started my my little baby brand <laughs> um i was and what's the name of your brand body swimwear um, say that for us one more time body so I, okay. my name me people like used to say bobby so I say body because okay. I want to sound like a body. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so swimwear. Um, so yeah. So when I started, uh, I had actually my first year in, in a bodybuilder. And then I used to like look up to people like Jay Cutler and I was like, man, this guy, he did much more than bodybuilder. He like that, like that's the kind of person that inspired me he he's a champion of course but he's been doing business and all over and people recognize him not just because of bodybuilding and i like that and i was like okay he did why can i do too i know that i'm not even like that level right. i'm just started but why can i just start giving my little steps so i was like i need a, I want to have something that is mine like i can take care of so right. i decided to start my my little brand and since then, I mean, and here. it seems like the brand is doing very well. So I heard you talk about in the beginning of your career of bodybuilding. So that's before bodybuilding. How, what made you get into fitness, period? Like, what was your, your aha moment? Like, hey, I got to start working out or I want to just go to the gym. What was it? It was when uh, so I passed, like I, I got inside the college. And since then, I was super skinny. I never like I used to <laughs> I used to be that girl that only think about study. I wanna when I focus on something I focus. So I was like I wanna get to college, and then I used to actually judge people that go to the gym say like these people waste so much time, and then I remember I got into uh, my college and I was like you know what now like I'm here I'm already like getting um, comfortable in college I'm doing good so maybe I should have add some activity in my life too right. not just being a bull. So I um, I got a membership in the gym because I was always so skinny and, and little. And Brazil is the word, <laughs> no, everybody talk about is the word of the curves and uh, the the booty and right, the legs. Right. I was like, no, I want to have that too. So I started going to the gym. And I remember my first personal trainer was a bodybuilder, old school bodybuilder in my city. And he taught me like a lot, like the old school training, like hack squat. He used to like, I used to be three months training. He used to uh, make me squat super set of um, walking lunges. It was like crazy. I used to get like out of the gym, like shaking, but I used to love that. That right. was like, okay, like I like that. Like I saw my body changing. And you know, when you, you were younger, you were skinny, you we start eating because I start eating right because right. I, I didn't even know what to eat. Like, I didn't even know that we have to eat like a damn amount of protein, carbs, because I was just 
eating what we in Brazil we eat, like pão de queijo, <laughs> rice and beans, right. so a lot of carbs. Um, so when I start eating prop better, not like bodybuilder, but I start eating, oh, okay. You so you need cleaner. a little more protein right. too, it's important. So I, I see my body changing, the legs start growing. It's like, okay, I like that. So I start falling in love for them. And that's good, man. So at least we know there's a a path to how you got to everywhere you want. Of course, you was... I got the influence from the Brazilians. Of course, like that's the... your hometown. I mean, that's I your country. I remember going to the gym. I used to train and see Angela Boys in the TV, like competing <laughs> Arnold right. and Arnold Brazil. I was like, oh my God, that's like insane. Um, so yeah, that's why I always say, like everybody asking, like how I was competing at Olympia. It was amazing because it's Olympia, but it was even more amazing because I was able to share the stage with women that it was for me like, Come on, right? Angela Boyce, Franciel, Lisa Pereira, Yarishna, like those girls, I've been look up to them. Uh, I've been learning how to train with them and be on the backstage with them. For me, it was just like so honored. And I mean, it's amazing because when you think about it, you've also trended very fast in the <clears throat> IFBB. I mean, you, you went pro. You, your first year going into the pro leagues, you went to the Olympia. Your second year, you go to the Olympia again. So you mm -hmm. did it at a very fast pace. So before we get into that, how you get into bodybuilding? Like, what what was the calling? When we, when did you go, I want to start competing? <laughs> that was so funny because I remember in 2019, um, I just had, I was always super skinny, like I said. So I didn't have uh, my silicone too. So I, I finally had my, my, silicone and then I was so happy but I'm, I wasn't feeling good with my body and I was like you know what I don't feel good with my body because I like to eat too much like I eat everything that I want to right. like I don't have a, a routine I don't have a structure so I was like and then by the time of course I was I was already a fan of like all these uh, women in bodybuilding and really, really fan of the bikini division as well. Like Angelica is a Pessini since a long time, since in Brazil, before I even moved to America. So I was like, in, and then I used to, I remember I used to like look pictures of Angelica and then they, they stomach so small, like the waist right. so tiny. I was like, I wish to see myself in that level of condition one day. I just wish to see myself on stage one one day. I don't want to compete. I just want to do one show. And that's what I told when I I was like, you know what? I think if I have a structure, because I always admire bodybuilder, that's what is amazing. Because the bodybuilders, one thing they are for sure, they they, they, they follow routine. They have a structure right, in life. Absolutely. So you have to. So I used to think, I, I'm, in my whole life, I, used, I, I needed that. I needed a challenge to make happen. Because if you're not, I'm like, ah, oh, it's okay. I'm just going to eat my carrot cake because I love it. <laughs> you love carrot but, cake? Uh, oh, that's my favorite. That's your favorite? The Brazilian carrot cake. Brazilian have carrot to cake. Say. You we guys will keep that in mind. Deck. Everybody is Brazilian carrot cake, <laughs> not just regular carrot cake. Yeah, you want to make me smile, just give me a Brazilian carrot cake. <laughs> right. So, you know, when you have a challenge, when you're committed to something, you know that you're not going to eat the carrot cake. Right. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself one time. So I contact this um, coach in Brazil that I already knew, it, Diego. And I was like, Diego, I just want to do one show. And he's like, okay, so let's do it. And then by the time that I have a wellness, only have a bikini. But I was like, okay, let's 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 try to fit in bikini. Right. And then I want to do a show. I just want to get you there. Shade, like my best that I can do in that moment to the stage. Okay. So that's basically that's how it. I started, huh? My career started totally different from that. So I played football in school. I ran track, played yeah, basketball. So I was an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, and me thinking that I would have an opportunity as you and I have talked earlier, like, you know, here in America, we have football, we have basketball, mm -hmm. we have baseball, we have hockey, we have track, we have all these different avenues to be in a pro athlete, right? And I always thought I was gonna go to the NFL. Mm -hmm. But once I injured myself, I said, oh man, I don't think that story is gonna happen anymore. So being a trainer, it was my next step. So I just fell in love with personal training and somebody walked up to me one day and said, hey, do you compete? And I was like, compete in what? And it was like bodybuilding. And I was like, no, but I love bodybuilding because I always looked at the magazines and all that type of stuff, but mm -hmm. I never thought about actually getting on stage. I just wanted to look that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so, pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, so the minute somebody actually brought it to my attention, I said, you know what? I'm going to try it. 
That's cool. And that's when it bit the bug bit me, and I've been with it ever since. So that's interesting to know that you still had a you still had a strong drive, and you said, "Hey, I'm gonna dedicate myself to it." So then you did bikini because, like you said at the time, wellness wasn't there. So was the goal? I never did the bikini though. That's you one. never. So you never did it. So that's the thing that a lot of people get confused. So I was starting my prep. Um, to bikini okay and i remember being 10 weeks out when i met uh jm okay and tyler i remember this conversation <laughs> they saw me and jm said hey are you competing i was like no i'm actually prepping for my first show and he's he's like you should do wellness I was like, I'm actually prepping to do bikinis. Like, yeah, but you're gonna have to to lose those legs. So why you don't instead to lose them. those right. or grow them right. to do the wellness? I was like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to do off season now. I remember being starving because I was I was literally having to not eat because I had to lose a little bit of volume. And and then he said, go eat because you can eat because you can grow. Right. <laughs> so I I did a, that show ten weeks and then I went to off season. And it's supposed to compete um, in the beginning of 2020, and then COVID happened. So we have to postpone that. Okay. So I, I kept like kept, kept working. off season training. It um, was a tough like year, of course, even hard to get gym, to train. I used to like do cardio at the stairs <laughs> um, in the morning because that's the only thing we had in the moment. So, yeah. And then... 2020 at the end of the year um uh, was my first show was your and, first and show? wellness was already happening mm -hmm. um so i did chicago pro the amateur mm -hmm. extravaganza the and then um i remember winning my novice class so i won my novice class um and i no i won my novice class and i won my class oh you won open a, class too a, okay. overall, yeah so of course i was a baby you know don't expect like win the right. first year on the first show and then and then i did another show i, I wanted like okay let's try to do a, a show a national show so i did a national show three weeks uh, later universe and I got fifth place. That doesn't feel good. Oh, oh. Doesn't feel, okay, doesn't that doesn't feel, good. feel good. Because I, um, okay, my first show I won. So I was like, okay, I like that. I like to hold the yeah. trophy. I like to people, you know, you know take I the am. picture thing. Right. And at this time, I was in a national show with um, a lot of girls. And um, fifth, I was like, okay. But it's okay because I was still second show. So I told myself i'm gonna do the same show next year i want to do the point. same exactly show so i i went and then so this was november 2020 and 2021 was in july again because you remember the whole schedule of covid changes right. so nbc universe went to july um and then uh, it was the end of june july and then uh, I did that show and I won the overall. So yeah, that she was, did. That I remember was, that show. Yeah, that was the like the biggest day in my life because for the first time I started to believe, okay, like I really work hard for that because I want to bring the conditioning. Of course, my problem was always size and I always be aware of that. So one thing that the judge always came up to me and said, Barbara, as long as you bring the conditioning, like at least we can see the shape but what happen if i i come off i don't have anything right. i don't have the condition i don't have the, the size and then they can see the shape so the only i always play with that like i always play with the conditioning trying okay. to bring as much conditions as i can so they can see the shape they can see the tines right. it's what i have to play like we play with what we have Absolutely. i don't have the maturity you to play the game that makes sense for yeah, you yeah i don't Absolutely. have the size of of uh muscular yet i don't have the density i don't have the maturity muscle i just started so i'm gonna do what i can do what i can do bring the condition because that i can do i can't do my extra cardio right. i can't i can eat and right. i cannot mess up in my meals so you control what you can control and i i did that like i make sure that all my meals was on point my cardio is like all the kind and if you need to do more or do more all the posing and the pose to i was trying to like be like soft and always be feminine on the stage i always uh, used to listen to ciara and beyonce <laughs> and i was like yeah i want to that vibe i want to be confident that was a big challenge for me at the beginning too the posing i think you did a great job i mean truth be told and me just saying this as a pro you've done better than me mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> You've done no. better than me. So I, I went pro. Started. So I went pro my first show, my first national level show. My pro debut, I came in 11th at, at Boston Pro. And then I came in last in my second pro show um, at DC Pro. <laughs> Your your pro shows you went and won and go to the Olympia. So no, you know man. what I'm saying. You won. And my thing is your career looks way better. It has mm-hmm. a great outcome to it. So to me, even though you've taken the time to walk away from the stage, I still want to give you your flowers because in the IFBB is already a hard league as it's, as it is. You know. So to be able to say, hey, I've won two shows. To say I'm a two time Olympian, that is a great success. You know, like there's a lot of people that will never make it to the Olympia, and you've mm-hmm. already done it twice. So mm-hmm. I just want to tell you, you know, I me mean, congratulations because you. whether you step on stage or not, they will never be able to remove that from mm-hmm. your title and your mm-hmm. resume, That's right? For sure. So now that we got that out of the way, because that was the fun stuff that I'm sure everybody at home wanted to know, like, hey, what was the story on how she competed? All right, cool. We can move past that. <laughs> now, you from Brazil. I'm here to tell you, I want to go to Brazil. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. And I want to go. So talk to me. Like, why everybody want to go to Brazil from your point of view? You from the country. I mean, <laughs> I mean, do you believe so <laughs> when you hear Americans talk about the Brazil, like talk about Brazil, do you see it the same way or do you feel like we like over over the top with it? No, I understand why they felt the way. I might not feel the exactly same way because I was born there. Right. But you when you raise in a different situation and you go to a different culture, you're going to feel the difference. Right. So that's how they feel. It's the same for me. When I moved here, I love this country so much. I love how the people are. I love how uh, the first thing when I step to this country, like people say, sorry, excuse for everything. That's one thing that I had to learn because we don't do that much in Brazil. Okay. Like, oh, I'm sorry. So it's like things like I, I it was different for me. So I was always a fan too, like oh, the movies, music. I'm really into, like I was saying, I love R&B. So no, she I, loves <laughs> Usher. <laughs> So Usher, if you're listening, here's your biggest fan and, and her mother. So Usher, send her some tickets. <laughs> send her mom some tickets. And yeah, you know, no, not just, hear uh, Truth Talk, we're going to appreciate you. It's but, one of my favorite for sure. Right. But, so yeah, I always love the country. So I believe that that will happen too with Americans when they go to... Um, to Brazil. Yeah, I think I'm going to lose my mind when I get to Brazil. Yeah, like I think I'm gonna the lose, people I'm are really, lose my cool. they're really, really warm. The girls are really beautiful. Yeah, all that. That's <laughs> why I'm, yeah, I'm going. I, I'm, I'm over there. I'm going to probably do a whole week. <laughs> just go over there for a that's whole all, week. That's what every guy says. Yeah, we just going to go over there for a whole week and see what Brazil got to offer. So now that you're here, You've lived in Chicago, you live in, and now you're living in Miami. And I've already learned, I can tell the whole world, she does not like the cold. I'm here to tell y'all, <laughs> she is a warm body person. <laughs> so, you in Miami, clearly you love it. What's the thing that you love the most? Because I know why I love Miami. Miami is like a playground for me. <laughs> it's like when I go to Miami, I just lose my cool. Like I'm there and it's like a playground. I just, everything I want to get into, I get into. You live there, so it's totally different. And you enjoy living there. What do you love about Miami? You know what? I remember when I was in my city in Brazil. And one thing that we don't have in my city is a beach. Okay. And I remember that I always want to live in a beach, by the beach, close to the beach. And I remember saying that I oh, wish to live in Rio de Janeiro. That okay. was like, you know, but but God have a different ways to get a life. I never thought that I would be living here, and uh, end up that I live in a place that kind of look like Rio de Janeiro, okay. um, and the place that I I, I I had the dream to live, you know. And Miami is. Miami is beautiful. Like, you have the two sides of Miami, so you have to be really um, aware of everything. It, a, lot, a lot of things going on. Um, but what I love about Miami is, is because it's so beautiful, and uh, most of the time the weather is good. And uh, I don't know. I feel like the vibe, you can find a little bit of everything, a lot of culture. Um, and it's beautiful, I think, mainly. It's beautiful for sure. Mm-hmm. Anybody that don't believe me, trust me, <laughs> Miami is beautiful. I'm here to tell the world it's beautiful. And you fit in because you're beautiful. So that <laughs> means everybody, when you're walking around, you fit in and everybody probably believe you from Miami anyway. So that works. So 
the now that we've in Miami and you you are an influencer at this point. You're not just a bodybuilder. So we're not even going to talk about that anymore. Let's talk about how you influence these women to be great. So you know one of my favorite posts that you make all the time? Mm -hmm. It's like, no waste. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to keep that tight. No, me, you ain't trying. You're doing it. So look, <laughs> if you want to see some disappear, you can... So mm -hmm. this is where I know... I don't know if you... Can you do this standing up? That's what I want to know. I've been trying to learn how to do a vacuum forever. Mm -hmm. It don't work. Really? It don't work for me. So... I don't care what I do. I lay on the floor. I don't disappear. <laughs> I lean over I top of something. Now I just ate it. It doesn't disappear. But usually I do like in the morning when I just wake up with stomach empty or right after my fasting cardio. But that definitely it was a thing. I start like saying no waste is the goal <laughs> because I say like I, people say like oh, okay like your your waste is disappearing. So I was like okay like the the the, the idea is disappear. Right. Like I want to close to zero. Right. So no waste. Um, so I start saying no waste, and then I see some girls is like okay I want to no waste show. And then I was like, "That's cool." And then I I did the program actually. The um, it's a it's an app that people can learn what I teach. Well, tell us about it. Tell us the, about the app. Yeah, tell it's us in about my the program. Instagram, so you can sign up. It's a app that I just like. I I know there's a like a lot of program workout programs, but I want to bring something different from the girls that don't 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 a lot of people share. Okay. I know a lot of people share about the core, but like how to keep waist smaller while you growing your legs and glutes. That's okay, a so challenge. give us one secret. How do you the, keep your legs the smaller? Vacuums. The that's vacuum. one thing that's for sure that I do every morning. Okay. And on and off season, and when I was prepping too for, uh, but now in off season I still do it even some days are hard like I feel a little bloated and in my days of the month I still do it and actually helped me to um with my gut and everything it's it's pretty good I've been doing um, so ladies all you ladies out there that's looking to lose your waist <laughs> vacuum in the morning <laughs> she just told you the secret you don't there's, one of the secrets. There's one of them. But if you want to tune in and get a bigger secret, mm -hmm. sign up for the No Waste program. <laughs> but we know that if you vacuum in the morning, you're going to be on your way. So you have that. And I have to ask because it's clearly the biggest thing in Miami. So Brett has moved there. And we've all, everybody that knows him. has He's the booty king. Like, if you want to grow a booty, this is who you're going to see. Now... What I love about him, he the only trainer I know that's in flip flops, jean shorts, <laughs> tank tops. Like he's he just a different breed of a guy. So, but let's talk about the workout. Like I see a lot of different women post different workouts. You know what I mean? And you know everybody has their perception on the training. Mm -hmm. You live it. You you do it every week or whenever you can. What do you find so effective about his training that you like? You know what? I'm signing up for this. <laughs> I remember when he just moved to Miami, I was like, okay, he's here. So I start going to his gym. Um, and I remember by the time I just had my, I had to redo my surgery. Okay. So I was 10 weeks without training. Okay. I was just recovering, getting back to the gym. Mm -hmm. So I came up to him and then I, of course, not training for 12 weeks. I lost um, a lot of muscle. Uh, I tried to keep as clean as I can while I was recovering. But of course, I was like the dancer. Like I wasn't like the way I, right. I like to be. Um, so I, I came up to him and he's even like say, hey, you, you look different like from, from what I know you. And I was like, yeah, I was on training. He's like, yeah, let's let's get back to it. And remember, that was amazing timing, too, because I started training for him and learning so much. Um, it's incredible because I started training for him since May, um, so seven months. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've learned so much, okay. so much. And um, it's the techniques, and he always, always have something to teach you teach you some um, course to teach you. Um, 
The machines you find, amazing. Like, his, yeah, do you find out? Because I noticed that he has pretty much every booty machine that's out. Yeah, and, it's, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, them are created by him. Okay, so... So he has his own machine too, uh, his own hip trust um, that he designed to, to hit um the better and it, it, it definitely does because okay. when you do it then you, you can feel, feel it, it. <laughs> so it's it's just like a blessing uh, not just learn from him but be able to train there uh, and it was crazy because after like one one two months my body just got back like snap back but i mean it's that's what it is that's the great thing about being in our industry as well because the body knows exactly what it's accustomed to yeah. so it will get back as long as you do the necessary things but so i had the opportunity grew, yeah. today to take you through a few exercises and see some different things about you. And I'm going to let y'all know we didn't work out hard. We just wanted to have a good opportunity to see, you know, the differences on how I cue things, different things like that. I had an amazing time, great time. Um, when you look at, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not even thinking about comparison, so that's not what I'm looking for. But when you see the way that I cue things today, what was, was there anything different for you? Mm, I think not different, but uh, definitely can see like uh, you know like the how to pace it, to to feel it, the workout. Like when you told me to hold it three seconds or count it, so mm -hmm. you can pace it slowly, you can let it burn. <laughs> so it, it's definitely a good, yeah. a good thing. So my thing is for me, it's all about blood flow. You mm -hmm. know, like I remember saying, hearing you say this a couple of times to me, like, hey, I got a good pump and different things like that. And my thing is the more blood you can push into that muscle is what's going to help it grow and shape itself at the same time. Mm -hmm. I see so many people go to the gym, and I was talking to you about this earlier, they have bad the foot placement isn't correct or mm. the cueing isn't correct or the technique isn't correct and the great thing to this is y'all just want to see this is tomorrow we're going to have a great booty camp at the shop jimmy manassas and she's going to also be the person that's going to be helping us with these beautiful young ladies that's coming out that's dying to meet her mm -hmm. but those are the things that they're coming to see they're coming to see like hey can you help me execute these exercises better mm -hmm. is there one particular exercise that you feel like is the the staple to growing a great glute I have one in my mind. To grow, I believe, like, isolated, more isolated for glutes. Is there a particular exercise, though, if, that you could think if of? If it's isolated, mm -hmm. I, I believe a hip thrust. If a you hip want thrust? To, yeah, okay. No. Um, but, um, of course, it, it's different. But I definitely grow uh, on hip thrusting. Um, heavy and sometimes not heavy, but trying to squeeze in a different way or challenge you with a band. Different techniques sometimes Different you do lighter, but of a, with a band. Um, but the hip thrust, I believe, is the grandfather yeah. of it all. But uh, um, if you want to shape it, I believe the one thing you cannot forget is the, the abduction. Okay. Um, so I, I definitely do a lot of abduction, especially for my upper glutes, because that was a big thing for me. And I have the, the shelf. So since I started for bread until probably. Two months ago, I was trained only upper glutes, um, and then it, it grew. So now we're going back to train more lower because I used to have the lower glute. That's why my tines was always like sharp, mm -hmm. but I don't have the upper glute. Okay. So I've been training a lot of upper glute, but it's a lot of exercise to like mention like one, you know, a squat is amazing to right. grow. The only thing with the squats, sometimes you're going to get your legs too, right. but they are uh, like, for example, I love squats, with, uh, um, free or squats with a box. This way I can focus myself that I need to like use the glutes. So I use a lot of my glutes on that. But Brad, for example, he said that that's me. He said, you're the only girl that squats and feel your glutes so much. Because most of the girls feel their legs. And their quads. So he, the other thing he said that I feel a lot too is in my my sumo that lift. He say you, like how you feel so much your glutes. Say so yeah, I can feel it. But before that, I, I always warm up with some isolated glutes okay. when I go to them. That's great. I mean, that's the most impressive thing. I mean, at least you have some staples and some things that you feel work for you right away. And that's amazing. So for me, I agree with you. Um, the hip thrust is definitely a staple to being 
you know, one of the things that we look at to grow glutes. I definitely agree with that. <clears throat> um, I also like isolated kickbacks. Um, mm. I think isolated kickbacks also gives you an opportunity to get that blood and that shape that you need. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean... And I also just look at how the body type is made. Everybody's body type is different, so everybody can't train the same way. But mm -hmm. I think those are the two exercises that come to mind where I'm like, you know what? If you really need to isolate the glute and make sure that you're literally doing that, that's the one that I would pick. So one thing I also notice is, like me, I'm a fashion guy. Like, got to stay, I, I got to look good, feel good in the gym mm -hmm. when I dress. Is that a thing for you, or do you feel like, it, uh, I know I know you sponsored by people, but the question is, do you honestly feel like you have to look good when you go to the gym to train? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm a girl, first of all, so I like to feel cute okay. even when I'm training. Um, and that's one thing that I like. I love it. Um, so I remember 2020, before 2000. 20, even before I started like, um, competing, I already used to wear bombshell because I remember in, back in 2017 when I moved to America, uh, I was looking for gym clothes that I like because in Brazil we have a gym clothes that make the waist okay, smaller, cool. okay, that make yeah. the body up. So I was like, I need to find a brand here like this and these brands, they, they make the waist look so weird, the booty looks so flat, I don't right. like it. So, so I found bombshell and I was like, my God, it's so beautiful. And everything, the shape and how to make the waist. So I got my first one, my first legging. And I remember <laughs> <laughs> I used to wear the legging like two, three times a week. Right. I was repeating. And uh, I became a fan. Uh, of course, it's not like so affordable as like the other brands, but it's crazy how every time that I was wearing, I was feeling myself. And that's important. It's important as a girl, it's, it's important for you too, Absolutely. not for other people. Yeah. And when you feel good of yourself, feel good on your skin, you you just get more comfortable and confident doing whatever you're doing. And then like a gym, for me, it's a work Absolutely. workplace. It's a definitely. So why am I not gonna feel good in my workplace? Absolutely. I'm glad we're on the same page because I'm the same way. I'm like, man, when I when I step in the gym, I got to have the first J's on, I need the sweatpants hit a certain type of yeah, way. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so I'm the same way. I'm glad we're on the same page. So, but are you into sneakers? Yeah, I like it too. <laughs> a lot. Uh, no, so no, like I don't know all the all the the new the the top ones, but I definitely have uh, some favorites. <laughs> what are your favorites? My favorite, favorite, your favorite. favorite favorites. Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, but well, give me your top I like two. Jordan. I definitely okay, like the Jordan. Jordans. Okay, the ones. Oh yeah, and, and, and I have a pair of ones. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I used to wear those a lot, and I think it's cute or the outfit. And you like, I just love shoes. I actually have a more sneakers than heels. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see now, y'all know she's a sneaker here. Y'all heard it here first. So. Now that we know all that, let's get to the good stuff. Food. <laughs> Are you a foodie? I'm definitely a foodie. You if you're Brazilian, okay. you're going to be a foodie. You're going to be a foodie. So um, we know that Brazilian carrot cake is the way to go. <laughs> we know that already. What's the favorites? What are we eating? I'm a pizza guy. I'm a fried chicken guy. No, I'm a biscuit guy. <laughs> what's, what's your favorites? Whew. Uh, <laughs> it depends of the mood, but I I, I can tell like I, I think I can say that I like almost everything. Almost and if everything? not, I'll try it. I'll tell myself, okay, I'll try it. Okay. But I definitely in my top like I was telling you yesterday, I love Asian food. Okay. Um love Italian. Of course I love Brazilian food. Um Japanese like I love So you eat it all. Like most of the food, yeah. I love like a home cooking too. Um, but they also love like a clean meal, you okay. know. So I, of course, today that I'm not competing, I'm more like living a lifestyle. So I try to find a balance. Um, before, uh, as I was competing, I had to like follow a, really a structure. Right. But today... Um, I have uh, my my meals, my mega fit meals, and I eat clean through the whole week. And then when I feel like I have a shit meal, and then I enjoy a good restaurant, right. a good meal. 
So <laughs> that's funny you said that. So so many people reach out to me, women especially, and they want to balance bodybuilding with life. <laughs> but they tell me, Frank, I want to go pro. Frank, I want to win my show. Frank, I want to do these things. Your advice to a person that, and we're just talking about strictly competing, right? We're not mm -hmm. talking about adding anything right now. Let's just talk about the food aspect. Mm -hmm. Let's just, when you, if, if a person reaches out to Bob, because my answer is there is no balance when it comes to winning or going pro as a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I feel that way is because I take the sport extremely serious mm -hmm. in that manner. Now that you've done it at a high level, now that you're living this balanced life, now that you have a normal lifestyle that still consists of all the things that you were still doing as a bodybuilder, if a woman, what's your advice to the <laughs> woman right now or the, or the young lady that's saying, hey, I want to compete in bodybuilding, but I still want to have my balanced lifestyle, but I want to win. I want to go pro. What do you tell her? It depends what she means with balanced lifestyle. Balance to most people you is I want to still like I would still want to be able to eat. Drink. I was, yeah, I still want to do all the things. No, that's not gonna happen. You have to, like I say, like I told, why I decide to compete because I, I I had like this life that like oh, okay, like I want to order something here, I want to order and I want to eat out and I need a structure and that's one thing I learned in bodybuilding and that's why it was amazing because. Today, even not competing right now, I I have a um, I have a, a mindset to say, hey, is that good for me? Like I needed this right now. Um, so, but that took me to this whole road to get to that point. Like my mind today, it's able to say, hey, like okay, I need that. Or this is not gonna be good for me. I don't need that. Okay. But when I was competing in bodybuilding, uh, once you you're going, I believe, like, if you're serious about something, and I'm not saying just about bodybuilding, if you committed to something, what is the point to, to shit at yourself if you already committed to something? Right. Because you, you're not shitting your coach, you're not shitting the show, you're shitting yourself. Right, absolutely. Because uh, that's, what is the reason to doing all this sacrifice, putting yourself on the stage to be judged? If you were shitting in yourself. Right. So, so that I means feel, don't cheat, people. Don't cheat. Yeah, Y'all so already I think it, I think it's just like you don't need the... You can hide from... You can hide from your coach. You can even make your coach believe that you're following everything. And But the, at the end of the day, it's all why you're doing. So I think right. that's one of the things the girls always ask me while I was competing. How you keep so strong when like in the last four weeks that you can have a shit meal, you have to, like the low carbs and the, the carbs are high. How you do it? It's like, I remember myself, why I am doing that? Like, why am I doing that? You because knew your why. I don't... You know, nobody obligates you to do it. I hope not. No, it doesn't. I said the same thing. I hope thing. nobody's I in said, that look, situation. I tell people all the time, I said, look, man, no one is making you be a bodybuilder. Exactly. You, this is you something you want to do. Yeah, if you make a decision to do it, do it right. Not to win. Like, maybe you're not going to win because it's not depend on you. Right. Control what you can control. You have to remember not just you did the work, but all the 30 girls, the girls did. did the work too, right, <laughs> right, And then right. it all depends on how, how far they are from you on training level and on doing that. It's everybody putting that. So control what you can control. You may not going to win, but in your head you say, hey. I did the best. I, I did do. everything that I could. I like so, that. And I think it, that's not just for bodybuilding. And that's why life. I love bodybuilding. Because if you're able to observe what bodybuilding has of good, you can become an amazing person when you're outside of bodybuilding. bodybuilding. Absolutely. You can use the same structure the same routine the same commitment to in your business or in your family or whatever you're doing so if a person is able to do everything that a bodybuilder do and i'm not saying a pro level olympia level i'm saying if you compete in one show like i my first show i give the same dedication as i did my last show okay. it never changed it just changed the challenge right the level of the challenge but i i did the same routine the same the education was 100 percent both so i never gonna say that a guy from olympia 
a girl that is in, at the Olympia work better than a person in the first show. We all just doing a different path, but the dedication the is going to be the same. same. I like agree nobody, with that. Nobody, nobody, nobody died for 16 weeks and cannot get credit for that. Right. So I believe like if you do it, just do it for yourself. Like I did it. I love the first show was my first my my best show ever because like i say i want to see the 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 lines. The, ads, yeah. the lines and i want to like like okay i'm like angelica now <laughs> so i i was i was amazingly happy with oh, like yeah, wow I did it, yeah. I did it. I so get it. if she can do miss olympia twice like okay maybe i'm not gonna get miss olympia but I, look at me i look, look, look amazing look how good too. I look. so and it's like it's for you it was for me nobody asked me to do it i wasn't making no money of that but i i did the challenge for me and it was the best feeling and i love that because that's the best way to describe bodybuilding i mean and you can't get no better than that you know like that's the real reason why we're here we do it because we love it not because somebody make us do it but you still have to be dedicated to the cause and that's dope because it's so many women out here that's looking up to you that's looking up to someone else and they're not really knowing the truth behind it but now today they know like look i'm dedicated to this path and that's another reason why you're doing good with your business is because you're taking that same concept and you're going hey I had to do this 365 days out of the year, and now my bit, my brand has a have the same impact, has have the same mm -hmm. touch to it. So that's amazing to you, man. So keep that going. Thank you. I can't believe that it's almost been. So you've been off the stage two years almost then. I off. Yeah. yeah. It was 2022. Yeah, so December two years, was yeah. my second my my second Olympia, and then I was like, okay, <laughs> I've been I've been competing since. 2000 end of 2020 to 2022 no stop two years in a row so i need the need the break i need a break i need to grow i need a, like my time you know uh, i wasn't getting that time to grow a real so season. yeah so i was like okay like i made it to the olympia i need to like now take my time i res have so much respect for the girls that i compete with and they they took the time to be down the top and then I always understood that um, everybody that is at Olympia, they took the time to get there. It's a, it's a process. Um, so it's the same for me. Like you, you have to take your time too. And then I'm not. This is not a mar like this is not a spring. It's a marathon. That's what yeah. everybody says, right? So yeah, you too. You're absolutely right. It's definitely not a sprint. It is a marathon. Mm -hmm. It will run. The stage ain't going nowhere. It's going to be there forever. I can promise <laughs> you that. I tip my clients all the time. Like, look, yo, we ain't got to rush to do this show. Yeah. Relax yourself. Yeah. You're not ready yet. Put a couple more weeks onto this. Yeah. So you are also in a situation where people can see you for everything. Like, they can look at your Instagram. They can see you as an influencer they can see all the things that you allow them to see through your social media and i think the thing that i love the most was you've you're very open about certain things that you've done that women are afraid to talk about like you are you talked about the, the surgery getting your your chest done and different things like that. And I'm just like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are afraid to talk about this. I'm, maybe because I'm from Brazil. I mean, <laughs> and I know we so like, we do <laughs> well, the girls are really like into beauty like right. everything the, that makes you feel good and all so that type stuff. maybe the the the, um, the mindset is different for me it's normal but i also think that's the reason why people gravitate to you so much because like myself i'm super honest i shoot straight from the hip i'm not trying to sugarcoat anything and i think those are the things that also women are also happy that you have a voice where they can go what did she just say? Did she just say this was okay? Oh my God, I can do this too. Mm -hmm. One of the things I also learned about you, um, I want to say about maybe six months ago, you made a post about being natural and not going in that space <clears throat> again. We don't have to go into depth about what you did, but how did you get to the place of, I'm not going to use the PEDs anymore? Um, the first of all, I want to um, I wanna have a, kids okay. i'm a i'm a girl so i start like honestly feeling my bad about myself okay. doing it not that i 
like overdo it i was was really careful of that but i was thinking if i keep doing that all the time what i like what they're gonna do with my body okay the inside of your body mm -hmm. so yeah the inside so it's time make me feel so bad and um never like girls always ask probably why you always say like that like yeah is something bad happens to you because i never like it's something right. really bad and, and I've had people ask me, they like, hey, did Barbara go through something? I'm like, yeah, no, no, uh, thank God, nothing like in the health um, and came out and happened. But I think it was that it was, I felt um, that w things was getting too natural, light. like it was getting too like, oh, it's okay, you have to. I'm like, hold on, like I don't need to, I don't have to. Um, and then I was like, I. I love body beauty so much, but I also love myself and I have a respect for myself, my body. So what am I doing? Like, is, is it ill worth it? So I asked that myself in my last Olympian prep. I was like, is, is it, it worth, worth it? it? Right. I was like, it, it's gonna tell you something that probably only two people know about it. Okay. Uh, that, um, that at the in around 10 weeks of olympia in 2022 i almost call off olympia okay i almost said i'm not doing it okay because i it got to when it was like like i don't want to do it that like, it felt wrong for mm -hmm. me so but i was i was like no i'm i'm gonna finish the show like i'm more qualified and like i say when i Put something I'm going we'll to do, it, and I right. still did my best. I still think I look like on my best, like conditioning. Um, but I didn't want to. I I don't know what happened. It just kind of click it. Like wake up. Like you're gonna do more than that in your life. Body beauty, it's amazing, but you also have to understand it's a. Uh, it's not a long it's not a long, long path. like everybody it, doesn't have a long like career. career right so you have to be careful and then i believe like a lot like it's for both men and, and girls but for the girls <laughs> talk to them talk to them it's okay that's you, why they, that's you what they gotta like think what you're gonna do after body beauty because I think we so into that, the vibe, I look amazing. I need more legs, I need more, I need more glue. No, I need to chopping up a little bit. I, and then you start, I'm gonna say what happened to me, baby, it's not with every girl, but I start like seeing myself like this. That That's beauty, that's how I had to look. And then I never looked like that because I wanna look like that, the sharp, the, the hard, and you know, I was like a baby. So it's like, you're not gonna get the level. So I was like, okay, like, hold on. Like, what do you actually think is beautiful? Right. Absolutely. What do you actually wanna do after body beauty? Like, you, you really need to force your body to that much? Like, you really wanna do that? That is no other ways to go and do a body beauty show that is going to be better for you and you still can do something after. So it's like, first thing, I'm going to finish the show and then I'll go and start training. I'm definitely not going to do anything. I don't want nothing in my body. And I'm going to start training and I'm going to start, uh, let, my, let the time because I believe you can, yes, you can achieve it naturally. build a muscle, a good muscle and a healthy muscle. It's going to take probably more time but i also think like for me that's why i say it's a personal opinion that's what 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 do you want for your life like for and my i think life. that's the part that matters the most is because i've heard so many people say hey frank do you know what made her stop competing or do you know why she's talking about the natural state all of a sudden and i'm like you know what i don't know but i have an idea of what it does because i'm a coach so i know and i warn the women like hey I understand what you see. I understand what you're reading. I understand what people are telling you. But there's a space where you're going to go, where things are going to change. Your voice is going to change. Mm -hmm. your, the, you might start growing hair. You know, mm -hmm. your, your lower region may change. Like a lot of different things is going to happen inside your body that's not normal for a woman. You know what I mean? So, and if you're not comfortable with that, you need to be. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I think it is, it, I think the girl just needs to be careful what what like because let me tell you something. I used to look 
amazing. When I look pictures back, I was like, I cannot believe I was so lean. I can't believe my quads were looking like that. But let me tell you, when I was in that time, I used to look myself, I was like, oh my God, I'm so small. Oh my God, <laughs> my leg doesn't have a density. My quads are so, so flat. Right. And then my quads look hard. Right. And, and then when I was off season, I was, oh my God, I look so off. And then I put a bikini, no, I'm, I look so fat. So I was never happy. Right. Because, but that doesn't have nothing to do with pads or that that's do with mindset. your brain your brain your mindset the social media the fact that i was comparing myself too much today like like i say if i go back to the stage my mind's gonna be completely different i needed that time off not just for my body but, but for, for your mind. mind absolutely yeah. and i'm glad you took that opportunity to do that i mean so the thing that i want ladies to understand is the reason why another reason why i bought her here is because She's honest, and you know, honesty is the key to helping you grow, educate yourself, and understand the direction that you need to go in. Sometimes too honest. People no, it's think no I'm rude. such thing as too honest, man. <laughs> Sometimes it's people no think such I'm rude. thing. No, I'm <laughs> here to I tell you, to this is true talk, man. There's no such thing as too honest. It's the right way to be, man. Be yourself. So, and that's the reason why I'm glad that you are yourself because that's what I look at. I want, I want people, especially your the people that love you the most like today it warmed me to see a young lady that's a pro come up to me and go frank can i please say something to her can i please have her pick? can i can i, I interrupt what y'all are doing me today the, i love me the, like they ask yeah me like, and i'm like yes. yo please go ahead <laughs> they like but i know y'all are training i'm like no man the reason why she's here is so that women like you can get an opportunity to have that conversation to have an opportunity to learn what they need to learn because she hasn't even done her pro debut yet so mm -hmm. now she can watch this or see you tomorrow and go hey these are some things i want to know mm -hmm. is it worth it mm -hmm. and, it, and, and and the truth of the matter is again you've done it at the highest level so it's not about whether or not it's worth it to her is it worth it period like is this really the path you want to walk down so now that you're in this state and you're like hey i'm gonna do this in a natural state are you wanting to still build your brand as an IFBB pro when you step on stage, are you going to still compete as a wellness competitor or are you going to go to back to bikini because you might fit it more or are you in a situation where you like, <laughs> I'm just going to jump out there and see what happens? So I've been talking to different coaches, really good coaches that I respect a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and most of them say the same, Barbara, you're in a tough position because if you, you're a little bit too big for bikini and if you go to bikini, you're going to have to distrain. Um, but if you want to do wellness, the chance, the chance is going to be really it's low. It's going to be hard, yeah. So, and then it's a funny thing, I think I told you yesterday, because... The, it sounds like doesn't have division for me, but I kind of love it the way Did I am you, right yeah, now. Absolutely. Uh, that's the first time in my life that I don't say, oh, I'm a too off. No, I'm too lean. No, I'm, a, I'm too small. Because I'm not comparing myself now with any other girl. I'm you like, comparing yourself to you. Man, I, I like it this. Yeah. The way I'm looking right now. I, of course, I'm still walking. I, I want a little bit, uh -uh, and, 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 but I'm still doing for myself like okay like i don't i don't getting i'm not being too hard on myself i'm right. like training to like keep it like um building a shape that i like it but not that pressure to try to fit in a standard that's great you said that so i'm gonna tell you my opinion and, and i'm telling you my opinion because you have an opportunity now to not follow the sport mm -hmm. as much as i would and i have to follow the sport because i'm still a coach mm -hmm. and i still compete so I do agree with coaches when they say, hey, you might have to think about it if you be bikini. It's going to be super tough when I look at wellness. I agree with that, first and foremost. But I also have comparisons where I feel like 
there are women out here that you're comparable to in bikini mm-hmm. that's doing good that I feel like you can compare with. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like if I put you against Jennifer Dory, if I put you against the Laura Lees, if I put you against the top girls in the Olympia classes, I believe you fit the shapes that they're bringing to the stage at this current state because they're a little bit more fuller mm. than they were before. And I love it. That's what the last Olympia I watched and I was like, yeah, I like that. Yeah, so the girls are definitely a lot more fuller mm-hmm. in the upper echelon mm-hmm. of the bikini division at this I point. Love. Yeah, so I think, you know, I do agree with the coaches that you're communicating with, depending on which shows you pick, will also play a, a major part on how they judge you. But I also believe, and I told you this uh, yesterday, my opinion, so mm-hmm. this is not a fact because I don't talk to everybody in the league, but I talk to enough people in the league where I feel like they still love you. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're still the sweetheart or the princess or the one mm-hmm. that they saw coming and like, oh my God, like she was great. And I remember the first time I heard somebody talk about you, the first thing I heard somebody say was, this young lady is beautiful. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> right, so, but you gotta think about it. Like if you... And again, I'm not telling you to admit this because you can stand still on it, but I'm going to say it because I'm comfortable in my skin. There isn't a lot of beautiful women on the stage. And I mean, they they look beautiful when they make themselves up, but they don't walk around every day and you like, oh my God, this person is beautiful. You have a raw beauty about yourself, which means when you do doll yourself up, it gets even more amplified mm-hmm. on stage. That's a win. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a win. Like, that's what I'm saying. Because the judges judge that as well, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I hear judges all the time. They go, hey, what color is this person's suit? They look at your hair. They're looking at your mm-hmm. body jewelry. They're looking at your tan. They're looking at all the things that you do on top of your body. And even though there's not a score for your suit or your tan or your hairstyle, they still judge it. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, I've always watched your stage presence. I'm like, damn. She good at what she do. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a good situation for her. Which I also think that's something else that you should look into as you're in this space of being an influencer. Like, I know women mm-hmm. want to know how to pose. I know women want to know how to beautify themselves in this space. I think you have an avenue for that. Like, me, when women come to me and they go, hey, Frank, can you help me pose? No. Mm-hmm. I'll tell y'all again, mm-hmm. No. I don't do that. I can get your body right. <laughs> I can make sure you look amazing when you get on stage. Frank will not teach you how to pose. I'm not going to put my hands on my hips. I'm not going to push my butt out. I'm not going to turn around and show you how I look from the back. I'm not doing none of that. And the reason, but I can look at you and tell you if you're right or you wrong. But I'm not going to show you how to do it because we have people like this young lady right here that you can reach out to and other ladies that going to help you get to where you want to go. So, yeah, I know my lane and I stay in my lane. I don't I don't get in your lane. Yeah, I don't cross over. But the reason why that is is because I appreciate the craft of it. I've seen women pose that I'm like, if that person fixed their posing, they're going to be that much better. And I also look at the fact that you've also, and it's crazy because you don't even talk that much on your Instagram, but I feel like your Instagram talks a lot for you. Like, like I said, I watch your posts when you do the the workouts. I watch your posts when you're doing the vacuums. I'm watching your posts when you're mm-hmm. showing your swimsuits. I'm mm-hmm. watching the posts when you're showing quick things of how you eat. I'm watching the posts of how you dress. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm talking about yet. Yeah, I'm like your page gives it all. Mm-hmm. I mean, you even giving us how to dress when you go out on the nightlife. <laughs> so if y'all, hey, if you want to know how to do the nightlife. <laughs> <laughs> Check her out. You know what I mean? She gonna show you, she gonna show y'all some things. I like a and those bit of are the things that I think is was really attractive to your brand. Your brand has taken off Thank because you. of that. You yeah, know? I try to be as organic as I uh, like when I post that because I'm really gonna go out like that. Oh yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> I don't just put the clothes and then go put my pajamas go to sleep. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I wanna go to like dress like that. Let me let me do it. Let me Yeah, show let you show it. out, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah, thank you. I, no, I, really like I mean it. I, I, my thing is again, I just wanna let you know the the truth of the matter. You know, a lot of people I feel like um don't allow people to be themselves. They don't allow yeah. people to be great. Mm-hmm. I want to see you be great. I want to be great. I want the next person around me to be great. And I, I believe if you put a bunch of great people in the room, a lot of great things happen. Mm-hmm. So that's how I look at it. The other thing that I also notice is 
in our industry, when I say our industry, I'm not talking bodybuilding. I'm talking about fitness as a whole. Right. Fitness as a whole. We all struggle with relationships. And what I mean relationships, I'm not talking about boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about the whole thing. Right. Every every piece. Not just just in the fitness. Let's be honest. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you how. No, let me tell you. Our industry, and the reason why I can't step outside of our industry in this conversation is because you don't know how many times somebody reach out to me, and I'm talking about clients, that's walking into training. And I'm talking about your everyday walk of life. The minute they get into fitness, this is the first thing I get. My boyfriend doesn't like this. My <laughs> husband doesn't like this. And I'm like, what do you mean? You're about to look great. You're about to feel good. You're about to be healthy. Help this. Help him get there. Mm-hmm. Or... My girlfriend is talking trash about me because I'm eating this way and she's not. And and I'm like, wait a minute, you need to check. And then I'm like, nope, them your friends. So we can't say check your friends. So what I can say is you have to look at you have to look at relationships. So my last question for you tonight. Mm-hmm. What's your advice on how to tell women, hey, when you're for starting your fitness journey? Look at your support systems like this. What's your advice to them? When you start your fitness journey, mm-hmm. what advice I give to them? Mm-hmm. As far as their support systems and, and their relationships. Because it's for them. Yeah. I mean, I never like had to deal with... Like, I, like One thing that I'm really grateful that I, I always got like a good support. Um, even for friends or boyfriend, the husband, I never had like problems with like in in the fitness. I always got like a good support. Okay. Um, but I believe that you have to think if the person that you say that loves you is not happy because you're doing something for yourself to make yourself feel better is this person really loves you hey we're gonna leave on that note right there i love that so you know some that's something y'all want to think about i like the way she put that and that was cool <laughs> it was smoking so hey man y'all know where we at man right here legacy sessions we I'm got like, bobby <laughs> i'm like rapping here. yeah wrap it out you know what i mean so we right here y'all know what to do man comment below subscribe do all the things that we need y'all to do like it let us know how y'all feel let us know what y'all want to see right here again at true talks man y'all know what we do we do it right here we do it great without no edits Talk to you. Bye, guys. (laughs) I'm like, bye, guys. (laughs)